despite a robust housing market that might be showing signs of an adjustment. Hello and thanks for joining us live at 6. I'm Trisha Keen. And I'm Abel Garcia. Dave has a night off. With home prices still rising, sales may be hitting a slowdown. Reporter Jeremy Chen spoke with one Valley homeowner about what happened when his for sale sign went up. Jeremy. Yeah, this construction site here in the Northwest Valley is pretty much indicative of the explosive housing market we're seeing here in Southern Nevada. Let me take a step back and show you these mounds will eventually have a lot of homes in this Northwest Valley, and it's a seller's market with cash buyers battling out for a chance at their future home, but it may take longer for sellers to pocket that cash. The house means everything to us. Uh, my wife and I never planned to ever leave this house. John Zenner loves his Centennial Hills home that he and his wife have lived in for the past 22 years. But to enjoy a more active retirement, they decided to sell it. The right person for this house was very, very important. It took some time to find that person. The four bedroom and three and a half bath home was listed at about $730,000. Zenner says there were multiple bids and a potential buyer was found. Due to lending issues, that buyer fell through and the search for a new one took a couple weeks longer. Of those 12 showings, although great interest was expressed, only one person made an offer and that one person had cash. It's a trend that's been seen valley-wide. Data from the Las Vegas Realtors released Friday shows home prices continue to rise, but sales are starting to fall. The median price for a single-family home was $475,000 in April, up 3% from March. However, available inventory of homes for sale went up about 22% from March. Zenner's realtor David Lee with Painted Desert Realty says rising interest rates are playing a big part. I do believe once it gets to the 7%, 8%, that's when we're going to see the majority of a slowdown come. And we got another year, year and a half for that to happen. He says the trend of high prices and rising interest rates will slow down sales. You know, sellers sometimes try to ask too much for their houses. So that combination on top of interest rates going up, houses will sit a little bit longer and it'll give the buyers a little bit more opportunity to, uh, to get in. Zenner says he can't buy a comparable home. He's priced out. He's now committed to renting as he wants to enjoy a more carefree life. As for the cash he's getting. I personally plan to spend 90% of it just, just having fun with my wonderful wife. Now, while Mr. Zenner would like to rent, and luckily he has found a place to do exactly that for others, it's going to be a challenge. Realtor David Lee says it's scarce to find any sort of rental units, especially with the sky high monthly rents people are expected to pay at this point. Reporting in the Northwest, I'm Jeremy Chen. That housing crisis definitely continues. Thank you, Jeremy. Well, plans to end the state's COVID state of emergency. Governor Steve Sisolak says he is looking to end it on May 20th. That declaration has been in place since March of 2020. Now, it allowed the state to respond to pandemic-related challenges, and Sisolak adds officials will work with partners to make sure services continue until the emergency ends. Right now, CCSD police say that they have arrested an employee who brought a weapon to school. Lieutenant Brian Zink says the arrest comes after an investigation at Shadow Ridge High School. Aaron Bronley was taken into custody yesterday and has been a substitute teacher in the district since February. The district says he has been removed from that position. Now to a developing story. The local student accused of trying to kill his teacher is competent to stand trial. And our reporter Alicia Patillo is at the courthouse with the latest. 16-year-old Jonathan Martinez Garcia appeared today in front of a judge virtually. Now, a court-appointed psychologist did determine that Garcia is competent to stand trial, but Garcia's attorney wants a second opinion. All right, State of Nevada versus Jonathan Martinez um, Garcia. Jonathan Martinez Garcia, the 16-year-old facing more than a dozen felony charges from attempted murder and sexual assault of his El Dorado teacher, appeared in court virtually today from Clark County Detention Center. His defense attorney, Paul Adris, requested a competency hearing in April after police say he sexually assaulted his teacher and then tried to kill her with a charging cord and a pair of 
scissors. That teacher survived the attack and police arrested Garcia a short distance from the school. Since then, Garcia was given competency evaluations. The result revealed today. It looks like he's been determined to be uh, competent. Garcia's attorney now requesting a psychologist of their choice to evaluate their client. What I'm requesting is to pass this three weeks uh, to follow up with the psychologists uh, and to determine if I'm going to move forward with an independent evaluation. Now the judge did approve Garcia's attorney's request, but those results need to be presented by May 27th. Until then, the 16-year-old will remain in custody. At District Court, I'm Alicia Patillo reporting. And change is coming to the front office of the Las Vegas Raiders. The team announced today that President Dan Fittrell is no longer a part of the organization. Now, Ventrell took over as the interim team president following the departure of Mark Bedane last summer. At the end of the season, Ventrell was given the full-time role as president of the Raiders. And we talked to him during NFL Draft Week in Las Vegas when he talked about the Raiders getting involved in the community. Well, we've always said over and over again that having the Raiders in this community is about a lot more than football games, right? It's about the benefits to the community. It's about making the lives of the residents of Southern Nevada better. It's about bringing more visitors to Southern Nevada and having everybody realize what a special place this is. And Raiders owner Mark Davis added in today's statement that no further comment would be provided at this time. Head of Human Resources Jamie Stratton reportedly also left the team and according to the team's administration page, she is no longer listed with the HR department. And new at six, Formula One isn't only bringing a big race to the Las Vegas Strip, its parent company may also be buying a very expensive piece of land in the Valley. Now, in an earnings call today for Liberty Media Corporation, the president, Greg Maffel, says the company committed to purchase 39 acres east of the Las Vegas Strip near Harmon and Colville for $240 million. This to support the Las Vegas Grand Prix, and the Grand Prix was announced in late March. It's set to take place in November of next year. And Trisha, the fun just doesn't end. I know. We just had the NFL draft. Now we have Formula One to uh, look forward to as well. It's exciting. I can't wait for F1 to be here. I'm so excited. Miami races this weekend, and I think that we'll do it even bigger and better, oh, right? Look at yes, Danny. Up on stuff. it. I'm really into you. F1. You are. <laughs> I really am. Always looking so good, I'm Danny. Look at you. I'm also really into forecasting weather, so let's get to that, right? That's what I'm actually here to do. Uh, today, the warmest day so far this year, the Hyatt Reed International, 96 degrees. I know we have several triple digit days ahead of us this summer. Have it today a little bit of taste of that summer like heat 94 right now at the airport 93 in West Henderson 99 in Laughlin. We did land in the triple digits there today close to the triple digits at Nellis. Now the weather story shifts from the warmth to the wind. You're feeling that breeze pick up sustained wind right now 15 to 25 for most of Southern Nevada with gusts exceeding 30 miles per hour for a lot of us. This is exactly what we expected and we stay warm and windy through the remainder of your Friday night. From here, our temperatures trend cooler into the weekend as our attention really turns to the intense wind moving in ahead of Mother's Day. Even tomorrow, windy, but we pick up those gust speeds even more by Sunday. I'll have the full Mother's Day forecast for you coming up in just a little bit. Trisha and I were just saying that it's becoming the windy city it here. Is. We might it as never well be stops. telling ourselves. It Mother's just Day end. is going to be nuts. Right? Yeah. Definitely. Well, as the weather heats up, taking the family to a splash pad might sound fine. But as Lake Mead drops to historic lows, some are now concerned that those splash pads are simply becoming a waste. And reporter Elizabeth Encourt is at Frias Park in Spring Valley with some answers. There was a post circulating on social media talking about what a waste of water these splash pads are, especially considering the historically low water levels that we're seeing at Lake Mead. So it really made me wonder where does this water go and why aren't there some restrictions in place? Well, I learned the answer is actually pretty simple. All of this water ends up being recycled, not just here, but essentially all of the water we use is repurposed with the exception of the water used to landscape. Every day on average, more than 200 million gallons of water are treated by and returned back to Lake Mead. Bronson Mack with the Southern Nevada Water Authority explains just how they're able to do it. The water that gets used here at the splash pad all goes down the drain. Everything that goes down the drain ends up at a wastewater treatment facility 
that wastewater gets treated to an extremely high standard and returned back to Lake Mead. So again, all of the water from this splash pad goes down into this drain and ends up at a facility. There's also some things that you can do yourself to conserve water, like limit the number of times that you water your grass or plants outside. The Water Authority will actually pay you $3 for every square foot of grass that you remove from your property. Reporting in Spring Valley, I'm Melissa Bethencourt. Well, the countdown is on until the 53rd annual World Series of Poker returns to Las Vegas. In 25 days, the longest running game event in the world will get started at Bally's in Paris, Las Vegas. And for the first time, it will be happening at the Las Vegas Strip. The event will get underway on May 31st and run through July 19th. And that is a lot of money stacked Lots right there. Of money. Yeah. Holy smokes. Well, Las Vegas company has mastered the art of bringing the great outdoors inside. That's right. And in this week's Nevada Built, Anchor Todd Quinones shows us a company that proves art really does imitate life. Fake plastic trees. That's certainly no way to describe these. Even up close, it is hard to believe they're not real. In fact, chances are you've walked right by many of them in a local casino, restaurant, or amusement park and didn't notice. We're thrilled when people don't notice us. Ira Falk is the CEO of PlantWorks. They love to mimic the ordinary and dazzle with the extraordinary. Like their creation at Catch Restaurant inside the Aria. Actual reproduction of Mother Nature's finest to something that's a complete um, uh, wild part of your wild imagination. Welders, painters, sculptors, and fabricators all meticulously recreating the finest of details. The result, often mystifying. We're also really happy when people go, look at that, isn't it beautiful? And sometimes their work serves a practical reason, like security at airports. Where we embed surveillance cameras and microphones in some of our products. PlantWorks has clients across the country. The company is headquartered in Southern California, but some of their best work is made right here at this facility right near Valley View in Russell. Ira calls Las Vegas a place of innovators. You think about it, Las Vegas leads in design. It's where everything happens first. So we're very excited to be part of that, part of that creation. But creating horticulture isn't all roses. They too are fighting inflation and also supply chain issues. I used to ship a 53 foot truck from here to New York for five, six, seven thousand dollars and now those numbers have almost doubled. Today, some 45 people work for the company, which is right now gearing up for a major expansion. We're going to be doubling the size of this facility in the next 10 or 12 months and we're doubling the number of employees who work here. And it turns out that some parts of these trees are in fact real and then preserved, earning the label a pickled palm. In Las Vegas, I'm Todd Quinones. That's like artwork. They look so Incredible. real. They look amazing. amazing. Well, Trisha, these days, why do we even need plants anymore? I know. You can just go to this <laughs> wonderful company and fill your house with some gorgeous plants yeah. like that. I mean, it saves a lot of water. There you go. <laughs> well, coming up live at 6, a rising star for the Las Vegas Aces while juggling motherhood. How Dorica Hamby has managed being a full-time mom and full-time WNBA player. Plus, Las Vegas is swimming with some sharks. The Shark Tank style competition event held today involving local students. One well, you at six this weekend is not only special because it's Mother's Day, it will also be the home opener for the Las Vegas Aces. That's right. And sports reporter Tina Wynn caught up with Aces player De'Erica Hamby, who will be celebrating both. Well, we know that the job of a mother is never easy. And for Las Vegas Aces, Dierka Hamby, she shares what it means to be a professional athlete, but also an everyday mom. Uh, it's hard, but it has its rewards. You know, uh, my daughter gets t uh, 11 extra aunties and just an extra family. Las Vegas Aces, Dierka Hamby isn't just a WNBA player. She's also a working mom to five-year-old Amaya. Uh, I just don't, I don't take any day for granted. And it's kind of transitioned into how I play basketball. I'd say like 96% of the time I'm playing like it's my last possession, uh, but it just gave me this sense of urgency that I probably didn't have prior to having her. For Hamby, it's more than just about playing basketball. It's about also proving that WNBA players can balance work and motherhood. It's a small community. Uh, we're all friends. I mean, the league in general is a sisterhood, but I think that the mothers, we kind of stay in touch. And when 
we play each other, we let our kids interact, and so it's a small little community. It's not many of us. I think it's like under 10, but uh, we have a bond. Hamby says being a mom has not only given her perspective in life, but also on the court. Like I said, she just kind of makes every day worthwhile, and like I said, just that sense of urgency. They don't take any day for granted, and like this transition to me not taking basketball for granted either. The Las Vegas Aces will open their season on the road against the Phoenix Mercury. Game is set for 7 p.m. Reporting from UNLV, I'm Tina Wynn. What an inspiring story. Well, happy Mother's Day to her. And Junior Achievement of Southern Nevada hosted a Shark Tank style competition today. Our very own Todd Quinones hosted the event and for six weeks, students worked on teams to develop business ideas that would be beneficial to the community. The top award went to a group that designed a product to help people with dyslexia. Organizers say the teams took home over $15,000 in scholarship money. A lot of really smart kids out yeah. there. Well, Teacher Appreciation Week is coming to an end, but before that, Governor Steve Sisolak is sending a message to all of Nevada's teachers and educators. Thank you for your dedication, your service, and your support every day for the students in Nevada. It has been a tireless year, and as we continue to recover from COVID-19, all of you are still working harder than ever to ensure students can be successful in and out of the classroom. And he also went on, as you heard, to thank teachers and educators for all their hard work and dedication so that kids could return to the classroom after COVID. And Governor Steve Sisolak says he's looking forward to working with school officials to ensure that everyone is safe. Well, still ahead at 6.30 tonight, our coverage on Teacher Appreciation Week continues. How one local teacher is trying to make a huge impact on the future of the Valley. We'll be right back. Welcome back and now to a story that is positively Las Vegas. The only registered pet therapy mini horse galloped to Southern Hills Hospital today. All oh. Southern Hills says that Scarlett, the therapy horse, helped patients forget that they were even in the hospital. The horse also met another Scarlett, a little girl who was visiting a loved one there. Therapy animals have been scientifically shown to lower blood pressure, reduce anxiety and help with speech and emotional disorders. Oh and man, Trisha, I was actually there when that little pony arrived. How and cute. Was, it was the cutest thing it ever. Is. So uh, listen, Channel 13, you guys need to take some notes because we better be bringing in some yes, ponies into yes. this station <laughs> A to mini help horse? with our mental health. <laughs> That's my dream pet. That's always been my dream pet. Most so people cute. want dogs or cats. No, I want a little mini horse. Aww. And he was so little. Like it's just yeah. so practical. Like, you can literally just put him in the back of your trunk. Really? And he is He's so the size small of a, a dog, right? Yes. So sweet. Just oh a large, God. a larger dog that requires a lot more maintenance than yeah. a dog. Um, <laughs> yes. Yeah, but also just gives you so much more. Oh my gosh, I just love uh, that. You sure. can't be sad around a mini horse. Danny, we're getting you a baby pony for sure. <laughs> for Something. Sure. I'll try to keep the plants alive first and then I'll adopt myself a pet. 97, that's where we're sitting right now in downtown Las Vegas. 94 in Anthem, 97 for Overton, 93 in Pahrump, 99 in Laughlin. It's a warm one across Southern Nevada. The official high at Reed International today, 96. So it was the warmest day so far this year. And now it's starting to become a little windier, right? Our gust speed's close to 30 miles per hour for most of Southern Nevada, and that will continue through the remainder of your Friday night. Expect warm and windy conditions tonight under a mostly clear sky. In the 90s for now, after the sun sets, we'll drop back to the upper 80s, but expect 80s through about midnight. Very mild conditions taking us into tomorrow with sustained wind 10 to 20 and gusts up to 30. We're not going to relax the wind speed into tomorrow morning. In fact, gusts just continue to increase from here. Temperatures, however, start to trend cooler. Tomorrow morning, really warm 60s and 70s for lows. So that is a mild start to your Saturday and our highs are still five to eight degrees above the seasonal average tomorrow. Forecast high of 93 in Las Vegas. So yes, we begin to trend cooler, but the more significant drop heads into uh, arrives heading into Sunday and Monday. So you drop about a 10 degree drop uh, into Sunday, another 10 degrees into Monday, and that puts us 10 degrees below low normal for the majority of next week. The trade off here is the wind. This cool down brought in by really gusty conditions. If you think tonight's windy, wait until tomorrow. Wait until Sunday. Tomorrow's gust speeds are going to peak 35 to 40 miles per hour. That is a windy one, but the windiest of the weekend is on Sunday. Mother's Day, we expect gusts 45 to 50 miles per hour, and that wind is going to be noticeable heading into the beginning of next week. The reason for this, the ridge of high pressure nudges east. A trough of low pressure swings in across the southwest. That brings in the much cooler conditions, but it also keeps the stalled front, which will keep the wind in play for the next several days. Those gust speeds are going to be hard to ignore, especially on Sunday. 
Sunday. We have high wind watches. We have wind advisories. We have red flag warnings with the elevated fire danger. It is going to be really windy as we head into Mother's Day tomorrow. Breezy, don't get me wrong, but the worst wind is expected on Mother's Day with blowing dust and debris. Uh, also could see the potential for dangerous crosswinds on the roads and perhaps some spotty power outages if broken tree branches encounter power lines. So Mother's Day, although temperatures look good and the sky is mostly clear above the layer of dust, it's just going to be too windy to be pleasant outside. So I would recommend making those plans indoors tomorrow. Windy as well, just not quite as intense. And then next week, the breeze slowly relaxes as our temperatures stay well below normal through Friday. That was a check of your 13 first alert forecast. We'll be right back. Welcome back. Well, as gas prices reach an all time high, more and more people are looking for ways to save at the pump. But don't worry, we've got you covered with our Money Matters Cheap Gas segment. Our first stop is in Henderson this evening. The cheapest price that we found out there was at the Sinclair on 971 Boulder Highway near College Drive. It's at $4.91. Now to the Spring Valley, you can head out to the Arco on 6102 West Flamingo Road near Jones Boulevard. It's at $4.69. And finally, we head to Summerlin. The cheapest price we found out there was at U.S. Gas on 7790 West Sahara Avenue. That's near South Buffalo Drive. It's at $4.85. And to find out where you can find the cheapest gas in your neighborhood, we post prices daily at ktmv.com slash cheap gas. Well, next at 630, putting an age limit on the Johnson & Johnson vaccine, what the FDA is recommending after cases of rare blood clots, including for a local. Plus, highlighting a teacher making a monumental difference. The hope of educators is looking to provide to her students. Cracking down on COVID, why some federal health regulators are concerned about shots and the local woman still recovering from vaccine complications. And a man is not facing charges after storming the stage, attacking Dave Chappelle. We'll explain the judgment being handed down tonight. Plus, we continue to honor local teachers. Our Dave Cravassier will introduce us to a special ed teacher going the extra mile. More on that story later on in this newscast. But turning now to the latest on the pandemic, the FDA is recommending that only people at least 18 years old should get the Johnson & Johnson COVID shot. That's due to a rare risk of blood clots. Now you may, you may remember that Emma Berkey was 18 when she got the shot and her life has never been the same. 13 months ago, I was hospitalized for about four months as a result of having uh, brain bleeds, blood clots, uh, four strokes, uh, three brain surgeries. So it's just one shot is quick, and I just never in a million years imagined something like this happening. The FDA now recommends that only adults 18 or older get the shot, but only if they aren't able to get other approved COVID vaccines. ABC News is also reporting some people are getting sicker after taking Paxlovid. The treatment has been shown to reduce the risk of being hospitalized or dying from COVID. But the White House COVID response coordinator says, like the J&J &J shot, those reactions are also rare. Right now, what we're seeing is about 2%, so one out of 50 people uh, end up having some sort of a recurrence. None of those people have in the clinical trials gone on to get particularly sick or end up in the hospital. Uh, so not particularly concerning. The FDA also reported that most patients didn't have symptoms. The drug was granted emergency use authorization by the organization in December of 2021 and is now available at more than 33,000 sites in the United States. And turning now to national news, the investigation continues into the man who attacked comedian Dave Chappelle during a performance at the Hollywood Bowl. That's right, the man is pleading not guilty to misdemeanor charges and a judge is issuing a new ruling against him. ABC's Morgan Norwood has more. The man seen here tackling comedian Dave Chappelle on stage at the Hollywood Bowl will not face felony charges. Friday, Isaiah Lee pleading not guilty to the charges. A judge is ordering him to stay away from Dave Chappelle and the Hollywood Bowl. Authorities say he was carrying this replica gun with a knife blade inside of his back, but law enforcement sources telling ABC News it wasn't used in the attack. According to this criminal complaint, the suspect now charged with multiple misdemeanors. My office has filed charges alleging battery, possession of a weapon with the intent to assault, and charges relating to interfering with a performance. 
my office takes protecting public safety extremely seriously, and we are going to vigorously prosecute this case. This video shows the suspect jumping on stage and attacking Chappelle in the middle of his set. He then continues to run behind the screen where he was swarmed by the venue security. Chappelle telling the crowd the suspect was being stomped. North Hollywood Avenue FD is already also responding. The suspect was being held down near Orchestra Hall, advised us to enter off of gate X. EMS taking the attacker to the hospital for his injuries. Kevin Hart! Fellow comedian Kevin Hart on Jimmy Kimmel Live Thursday night, sharing his thoughts on what happened. Somebody ran on stage and got their <laughs> Hart also commended Chappelle for finishing his show. Dave went back after that and finished doing the show. Yeah. Didn't let that thing be a big thing. I think it's time to get back to a place of respect for your live yeah, entertainer. Yeah. And it's still unclear how that suspect made it past security with that weapon. He's being held on a $30,000 bond. Morgan Norwood, ABC News, Los Angeles. And another comedian there on stage that night was Chris Rock, and he jo joked asking if the man who assaulted Chappelle was Will Smith. Rock is back in Las Vegas tonight for the first time since the infamous Oscars incident. His Ego Death World Tour is stopping by the Coliseum over at Caesars Palace, and that show starts at 9.30 tonight. Well, the U.S. employment rate is ready, and the April jobs report was released today as well. It shows a record 4.5 million Americans quit their jobs in March. This tight job market is a source of headaches for employers and for consumers because employers are not able to fill the 11 and a half million jobs that they have open. And the fact that there are shortages of workers mean that many businesses cannot fulfill their objectives. And the Federal Reserve also recently announced its biggest rate hike in two decades, hoping to cool consumer spending. But that means borrowing money will get more expensive, and that includes long-term mortgages that hit a 13-year high this week. Rising prices have some turning to a technique called cash stuffing. That means dividing your money into different categories like bills and savings. It's going viral with the hashtag cash stuffing getting over 376 million views. I sweat my car too much. <laughs> you don't really see how much money you're spending until you want to say, how much money do I have left in my account before I make this purchase? I started using this method and it became to the point where I started even reducing my own debt by making extra payments on my credit card. The woman you heard there said she was able to set aside $10,000 for the future after tracking her spending this way. And it's National Teacher Appreciation Week, and we're taking time to recognize amazing Clark County School District educators going above and beyond. And tonight, anchor Dave Cravassier introduces us to a teacher who says she can only hope to give her students as much as they give her every day. Can we say form? It's a blessing to have Ms. Nava on our staff. You know you're doing something right when your boss speaks so highly of you. I think everyone on staff aspires to be like her. Principal Anne-Marie Stover of Paradise Professional Development School can't say enough about her primary autism teacher, Mrs. Ella Nava. She understood that you've got to be able to provide that social-emotional learning support, the behavioral support on top of the academic, academic piece. What letter is it? Mrs. Nava majored in psychology and tried hospital and office work, but she says she never looked back when she turned to teaching 22 years ago. I fell in love with children with um, special needs. Mrs. Nava has been teaching at Paradise for five years now and says she couldn't do it without the parents. I think part of my teaching philosophy is to connect with with the parents because they're the first teacher. I'm not their first teacher. They are. They know their um children more than I do. But she's clearly making a positive impact, like the time she got one of her kids to start singing. It may not seem like much, but it brought that child's mom to tears. She was crying, I was crying, and I'm like, see, those, those little, little things. In my classroom, any tiny achievements from my class, from my, from my students, we always celebrate it. Of course, like anyone else, she has her tough days. Especially during pandemic, that's the only thing I regret because I really wanted to go into the monitor and tell them, hey, we need to learn, we need to learn. Mrs. Nava was a finalist last year in the Heart of Education Awards and a winner for 2022. She gives each of her kids everything she's got, and it's clear from watching her work. 
We don't say that they're limited because they're, they have special needs. They have a big capacity. They have a big ability. Mrs. Nava says she'd be letting her students down if she wasn't giving them 100% every day. They're pure souls. They will know if um, they will know if you're genuinely nice to them or not, because they will feel you. So that's why building relationship with them is really important. These students mean everything to Mrs. Nava, who says she wouldn't trade her job for the world. It's a calling. It's not that you're going to be rich with this profession, but you're going to be rich with with what's going to happen with your students. And that was Dave Cavassier. She's special. That's very, awesome. very special. Well, inflation is causing everything to go up, including credit card fees you might not be aware of. Coming up, we will explain swipe fees and how much companies are bringing in every year. Plus, the Las Vegas Aces are back in action. Coming up, we'll hear from Aja Wilson and why she says the team is ready for tonight's season opener. Stay with us. Welcome back. Well, you may or may not know that every time you swipe your credit card, you're charged a fee. Well, that's because a business must pay a fee to the payment processing company. And last year, Visa and MasterCard collected over $77 billion in those fees, and inflation is driving prices up. I think the American people need to know the story about these fees that cost merchants and customers and why they're not disclosed. There's a reason. I think there'd be a revolt even more strongly against them. Visa and MasterCard increased their fees again last month, and the companies say the money is used for security and fraud protection. But a law was passed in 2010 that limits fees placed on debit cards. The Las Vegas Realtors are releasing a new report showing home prices.